On last week's episode, I began my five-day journey through Taiwan, an island home to 23 million people. Good morning from another sunny day here in Taipei, Taiwan. I think the jet lag and all the traveling is finally starting to catch up with me as I am pretty tired at this point. But there's a couple more things I want to show you here in Taipei before I catch a very fast bullet train from Taipei down to the south of Taiwan to a city called Kaohsiung. Let's roll! First up today is the newly opened Pokemon Center here in Taipei. This place actually opened up last week. I actually used to collect Pokemon as a kid, as a lot of kids in the 90s used to do it back in the United States. And when I heard that this Pokemon Center opened last week, it's a brand new one, I just had to come by and check it out for myself. I'm very excited to go inside. This is my first time ever at a Pokemon store. Not a very big store, but every inch they have, they're using very efficiently. Every corner of the store has different merchandise for sale, has come to revive. You have plushes, you have the trading card game products, you have kitchen appliances, there's video games. It's a very, very cool setup, and the music really pumps you up. I mean, how cool is this room? I think these are the cards in the newest Pokemon set in the display case behind me. Over here, they're showcasing the Pokemon Classic Bundle set, which is, I think, their current most premium product. But just an overall very, very cool and fun design. If you guys want to bling out your Playdex, they have so many protective sleeves. They're all just beautiful. And playmats. Overall, some of the nicest employees I have interacted with work here at the Pokemon Center in Taipei. That's today's damage. I don't really know how I'm going to fit this into my luggage going back home, but I'm going to have to find a way. Look at that giant Pikachu there, jeez. Now my next stop here in Taipei is a dumpling place that I have heard very good things about. Located about a five minute walk from the Pokemon Center. I've worked up quite an appetite after all that Pokemon hunting. Right now I'm standing outside of a restaurant called Din Fai Tang. This is a dumpling place with very high reviews online and as you can see behind me, I think the locals seem to agree as they are lining up to get in. When I got here, I walked up to the chicken counter and received this queue number with an approximate wait time of 15 to 30 minutes. You can actually order here on the QR code before you sit down, which is pretty cool and a very smart way to keep this thing moving efficiently. I actually haven't had dumplings in quite a while, so I'm pretty excited to try these out in a place that is known for dumplings. The convenient digital menu offers a full list of English options with helpful pictures and descriptions. You add what you want to the cart and check it right on your phone. When I got to my table, there was already this hot glass of tea waiting for me to drink, which, excellent touch. Mm. Yeah, this is a good tea. Our first course has just arrived. This is two pieces of truffle pork shaolin ba. Let's give it a shot. There's soup inside. That's why when you lift this thing up, I think I see the camera, but there's water in the bottom. Wow, I can already smell the truffle. From my understanding with these soup ones, you have to bite it and suck out the soup first and then go for the taste. Wow. The liquid in of itself, so good. Wow. This is amazing. That's just really, really good. It's like the pork is just so well seasoned. It doesn't even have a strong pork flavor, it just melts in your mouth. And the truffle, not overly truffle, not too little. They deck perfectly blah blah together. Oh, so good. Next up on our menu is the chicken chow lumba. Also looks very, very good. There's a little chicken here, a little chick. They designate that this is a chicken bao. But we have five of these chicken baos. Sorry, not bao, chow lumba. I don't think this one has any soup in it. That was wrong. There was definitely soup in there. This is also very, very good. I will say the pork truffle was better because, I mean, truffle, you can't really go wrong with that, but this is an excellent chicken bun as well. You can taste the strong flavor of the chives, and I think there's parsley in there, I'm not sure, but it comes out very, very well. Not gonna lie, I'm a little bit nervous to try these spicy wonton soup because when I hear spicy in Asia, it's usually actually very spicy, but I'm being brave today, and look at the colors, this looks amazing. Smells really good too. There's definitely garlic in there. There's definitely scallions in there. I can smell the pork. Oh, wish me luck on the spice. <laughs> okay. 
God. That's an authentic reaction. The chili kind of hits you. It's not overly spicy, actually. It's very good. It's like a perfect balance, but the chili just kind of got me all at once. Let's go for a second bite now that I know what to expect. Well, it's good. It's a little bit spicy. It has like a very small amount of sweetness to it with the chili oil. And again, the pork and the shrimp aren't strong flavors. They're kind of like weakened a bit. And just the sauce and the broth just take over. And it's just amazing. It's like a symphony of flavors in your mouth. And finally, moving on to our vegetarian option for today. This is a combination of mushroom, onion, bok choy, and I think there was a couple other things in there. But as you can see from the color, definitely a lot of bok choy in here. Now I'm going into this expecting that it won't be as good as the meat options because I love meat. But honestly, I have not been disappointed so far. It might actually be amazing. Here's for all the vegetarians out there. That's what the interior looks like. There's these little white cubes. I think it's tofu, yeah. This is tofu. I mean, honestly, for a vegetarian roll, this is this is good. Especially with the soy sauce, it actually works together perfectly. If I wanted a non-meat option, I'd definitely go for this. They definitely put a lot of care and attention into making this like a hearty dumpling. Very well done. So guys, I haven't had a single bad dumpling. Yeah, the winner today, hands down, has to be the spicy pork shrimp wonton soup. It's just another level, like so good. I can confidently say, hands down, that was one of the best dumplings I've ever had in my life. And actually, let me revise that, best dumplings. Like, oh my God, the flavor, everything. Like, you have a bite, it's good. You try something different, it's better. You try something different, it's even better. Like, everything built on each other. I wonder if they brought them out in a specific order, knowing that the next thing they bring out is tastier than the previous thing that I ordered, but Oh my God, amazing. I think this restaurant is actually a chain. I don't know if it's just in Taiwan or if it's international around Asia, but I can't say that with nice things about this place. Loved it. And this wraps up what I have to show you in Taipei, Taiwan, but we're not done yet. Now I'm gonna catch one of the fastest trains in Asia. In Japan, they call this the bullet train or the Shinkansen. I think in Taiwan it's called HRT, but don't quote me on that. Anyway, it's a very fast train and we are gonna take it from Taipei city down to the bottom of the country to a city called Kaohsiung. I'll be spending the next two days exploring more of rural Taiwan. Now let's ride this super fast train in Asia and you can compare what it's like to ride in Taiwan versus back in the US. Let me just say, I'm not a huge fan of Amtrak. <laughs> Alright guys, just got to the main train station here in Taipei. Now as I mentioned earlier, the Taiwan High Speed Rail is the local version of the bullet train that Japan has. This train goes at a top speed of 185 miles per hour. So today we're going to be traveling about 200 miles distance and it's going to take about an hour and a half. So we're going to be going pretty fast. I'm curious, what's it like to sit in the train when you're moving that speed? Does it vibrate? Like, What does it feel like? How comfortable are the seats? We're gonna find that together. This might be the train station with the most amount of dining options I have ever seen. On the second floor, you essentially have a circular layout completely surrounded by restaurants. If you're hungry when you come, don't worry, you'll find something to eat. If you're craving American food, I saw signs for McDonald's and Burger King, so you have the option as well. I made it to the loading zone. It wasn't actually too much trouble to find location. The signs are written in Chinese, but they convert into English. Without that, I'd be pretty screwed. I'd have to ask one worker, like, which gate to take, but overall it was pretty easy. Boarding was a very smooth and orderly process. I booked a reserved seat number in advance, so I knew exactly where to go once on board. The seats were very comfortable, the ride was smooth, and I enjoyed excellent views of Taiwan as the sun was setting. The seats are about as wide as what you find in an airline's economy class, and legroom is comparable to an exit row while flying. Very spacious. The only unusual thing that stood out was the very low noise level in the cabin. Every Everyone was super, super quiet and respectful of one another, which is normally awesome, but it was almost too quiet to the point where you felt uncomfortable and awkward to make any sound whatsoever. Aside from that, it was a great ride. I've made it to Kaohsiung in southern Taiwan, and as you can see, it's very, very, very busy here at the train terminal at about 6.30 p.m. at night. One thing I've learned about Asia, there's a lot of people. The train ride was very smooth, 
pretty comfortable and the hour and a half went by really, really quick. There was even a lady on a trolley coming by to sell you food. So overall, very good way to get from one part of Taiwan to the other. If you enjoyed this video, you can really help me out by leaving a comment down below and sharing it with one or two of your friends. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Later, guys. Bye.